Simpson with Paul McGuire. Maybe the biggest and the toughest team that Tampa Bay Paul has played yet this year. Yet they are starting a rookie quarterback. John Reeves had him three and one. They're starting a rookie. Tampa loves it, but some might be saying, did Coach Steve Spurrier panic to go to yet another quarterback? Not at all, Jim. We talked to Steve Spurrier yesterday, and he has all the confidence in the world in Wayne Peace. There's just no question about it. He feels that the young man is ready to play now, and he's going to test him. I don't envy the position that Wayne Peace is in because after Birmingham Stadiums took a look at the, the game at Denver and the job that they did against Reeves and Tampa Bay last week, you've got to believe that they're going to come after Wayne Peace, and that's why I don't envy what he's doing tonight. The Heat was on the Tampa Bay quarterback a week ago. It'll be on Wayne Peace tonight. Let us go back now to Tom Means. Thank you, Jim Simpson and Paul McGuire. An ideal night for football in Tampa. Another big crowd on hand. This game shapes up to be a real battle between Tampa Bay and Birmingham. A pair of teams that split their two games last year, each in effect knocking the other out of the playoff picture at the time. But Paul McGuire, here we have you from Buffalo, New York. Here we have Joe Cribs, a former Buffalo Bill running back, and you haven't mentioned word one about Cribs. What's the matter? Cat got your tongue? Tom, there's one reason why I haven't mentioned Joe Cripps, because Jim Simpson and I all night long are going to be calling number 20 Joe Cripps because he is 90% of the Birmingham Stallions offense. He had a cruise deck last week, only had 22 yards, but he is ready tonight, and so are we. We go back down to Tom. All right, Jim Simpson, Paul McGuire, the Tampa Bay offensive production has been going down the last three weeks. The Birmingham offensive production has been going sky high the last three weeks. We'll see if the trends continue in what should be a very competitive and exciting football game tonight. Birmingham and Tampa from Tampa Stadium in Florida. You know, the Birmingham Stallions, after an opening day loss to the New Jersey Generals at home, have been really coming on like a house of fire. The main reason why? An offense which not only has been producing the best offensive production on the ground, but also in the air. Clipstown has been getting better every week. We spoke to Raleigh Dutch. So I think our football team has improved in quality and in team speed. We're, we're a little bit quicker defensively. We have young backs that can run. But I think Joe Cribbs has given our offensive team a, a sense of, of knowing that he can break the long run. Where last year we had to grind and grind and six and seven and ten yard. Uh, Joe already has given us runs of 50, 40, uh, 19, 28. So... Uh, he's added a dimension that we didn't have before, and that's the ability to break a long run. We'll see if he'll break a long run tonight. Let's quickly take a look at some of the key players for both teams in tonight's contest. First, the visiting team, the Birmingham Stallions from Birmingham, Alabama. You have to start with the running back, Joe Cribbs, all NFL with the Buffalo Bills. Two weeks ago in Pittsburgh, Cribbs ran for a career-high 191 yards. He's coming off a neck injury sustained against Memphis some nine days ago, but he's okay tonight. Look for him to carry the ball lots against the Tampa Bay Bandits. Number 20, Joe Cribbs, the all-pro from the NFL. He'll be the same in the USFL. Quarterback Cliff Stout getting better every week. The former Steeler threw for 272 yards and two touchdowns last week. And wide receiver Jim Smith, former Steeler out of Michigan, the consistent deep threat for Birmingham. For the homestanding Tampa Bay Bandits, a man you may not have heard too much about, wide receiver Willie Gillespie. He's a second-year man out of Tennessee, Chattanooga, and boy, can this guy really burn it up the sideline. If you're looking at action from last week in Denver, Gillespie hauling in an 85 yards touchdown pass. That's a Tampa Bay Bandit record. You see his yearly totals. Willie Gillespie, a man to be reckoned with in the deep secondary for Birmingham tonight. He is a burner. In the running back department, need we say more than Gary Anderson, the most exciting two-way offensive threat in the USFL. Second-year man out of Arkansas, but he hasn't run for 100 yards since the first week. And quarterback Wayne Peace, the former Florida Gator All-American, getting his first start in the pros tonight. 
There is one other game tonight in the uh, United States Football League besides our Birmingham Tampa Bay matchup at the Houston Astrodome. The Houston Gamblers 3 and 1 hosting the undefeated and champion Michigan Panthers. We'll be updating you at that contest throughout the evening. That game does not kick off for another hour. This should be an exciting football game indeed. As I mentioned a few moments ago, Tampa Bay has to be concerned because their offensive production has been going down week by week. Their defense also has been stung with some big plays. While Birmingham's defense is strong, they have the number one rushing offense in the league, and their passing game has really come of age over the last three weeks or so. So we have one team on the upswing, one team on the downswing. They both need this game badly. Both are 3-1. and one. The loser tonight falls two games in back of undefeated New Orleans. The loser stays right on their tail. They're set for the kickoff. The crowd's ready, and we're ready. In Tampa Bay, let's go to Jim Simpson and Paul McGuire. Thank you, Tom. And we must tell you, as you take a look at the weather conditions here, 68 degrees, humidity 85 percent, the storm warning is in effect. And ladies and gentlemen, the storm is very near us. Lightning is flashing all around Tampa Bay Stadium, reminiscent of a year ago when in the fourth quarter they suspended the game for nearly an hour because of the threatening lightning. Raleigh Dodge out of Birmingham has seen 3-1. They've won their last three in a row. You can see the lightning behind them there. As we took a look at Doc, his team magnificent last week. There's Steve Spurrier. His team lost last week. Head coach of Tampa Bay it was Steve who dragged his team off the field last year in that lightning storm. Ronnie Johnson, Earl Gant of the men deep. As for Tampa Bay, it'll be Big Z, Z and Andrew Session, who has won three games for them with field goals over Houston 20 to 17, Arizona by the same score, and Jacksonville 28 25. Both teams 3 and 1. Tampa Bay looking for the key, and Birmingham feels it may have the key. And the session kicks off, and that's again letting the ball go past him. And he's going to keep it in the end zone, and it'll come out to the 20 yard line, first and 10. Cliff Stout, great week last week, 21 of 29, number 18, the quarterback. Joe Cripps will start. Leading ball carry on the club, number 20. Leon Perry, the fullback in a blocker's role tonight, number 30. Wide out, Joey Jones, the rookie from Alabama, number four. He caught his first touchdown pass last week. Jim Smith, nine catches last week. Former fielder, 86. Dale Mason, 81, your tight end. Woods in front of the tackle that Let him save his regards and Tom Banks at center. gets across the 20-yard line before he is stowed under. That was Kevin McClellan, the linebacker, a rookie out of Kentucky, who almost made the sack in the backfield. But Doran finally put him down. Walter Carter checked that. Mike Butler, 77. But Nordman, 68. James Ramey, 78. The front three for Tampa Bay. Some changes in the linebackers. Kevin McClellan, 57. He's new. Kelly Kutcher, about 51. Paul Turowski, 53. Alonzo Johnson, 58. Jeff George, 32. Warren Hanna, 20. A new start of the corner. for Jordan, 28. Henderson, 23. The safety. That's Smith in motion on second down six. Stout. First pass of the night. Gets the ball away. And Joe Cripps takes it out across the 25-yard line to about the 26, and he is put down there. They're running Joey Jones down there. Now, here's Joe Cripps. This is a little flip screen. You're going to see Buddy Adelette, the left guard, is going to try to get out in front of him. There's Buddy Adelette right there getting in front, but the play only picked up about two yards. They're, like I said before at the beginning, Jim, they're going to try to get the ball to Cripps at least 90% of the time. Well, that play only picked up a half a yard. It is third down and three and a half. Wind springing up, lightning in the area. Scott Bakery yet another pass. Has his man out there for the first down. And that is Dale Mason, the tight end. Mason across the 40-yard line. First down, dragged down by Kelly Kirchenbaum, number 51, an inside linebacker. And as you can see, Robin on 85 is coming in, so they will have the two tight end offense. Well, you take a look at Mason going out to the outside. When you have a linebacker like McClellan, number 57, trying to cover a tight end, it's almost impossible. They ran it with Mason about a four-yard short out pattern. McClellan was there but didn't make the tackle, but Mason would have had the first down anyway. Ball at the 44. We're just underway. No score. First down, Birmingham. What is in the last three in a row? That's Cribs and no. 
Kurowski, 53, is one of them down at the bottom, the good inside linebacker out of Florida State. Ronnie Dodge, an offensive line coach for all those years with the Steelers, and probably wears the Super Bowl ring. Jim Smith, his wide receiver, 86, has a couple of them. He can wear one on either hand. Raleigh has one. He has, he has two, one on each, one in each hand. He's got the one for the third one. Third Super Bowl and the fourth Super Bowl. Second down and better than 10 yards to go. It is raining and it is lightning. That is Joy Jones. 
in motion, and there's Chris picking up four or five yards across the 45 yard line. Alfonso Johnson, number 58, getting up, along with Mike Butler, who's making a start tonight after having a knee sprain last time out. I right, watch Joe Chris hit the hole now. He's getting great blocking up front by Leon Perry, number 30. But Joe Chris is so used to just popping into life. Carries the ball well inside and outside, and this weather will not bother Joe Cripps after playing in Buffalo for so long. High right, formation, Stout, 21 of 29 a week ago after being 2 of 16 up in Pittsburgh the week before. And now he gives it to the up man, Perry. Perry was told you are going to be a blocker this week. And Leon accepted the role, but he ran with the ball and picks up the first down and moves into the territory of Tampa Bay at the 46-yard line. Well, look at the size of Leon Perry. 5'11", 248 pounds, and both that all 248. Well, it got to the beginning of the week. He said, you are going to be a blocker. We have two plays that you're going to carry the ball. That was one of them, and he has accepted the fact. 8.20 to go, first quarter, 2 nothing Tampa Bay, first and 10, Birmingham. And there's Terry again. Boy, he's really got the roll of a rock. What do we have that meeting with Ronnie Dosh about today? Well, those are the two plays. <laughs> that, was, that one there, a, a, a quick draw play and a straight handoff, which is a trap play. So, Leon Perry, those are your two plays, and we'll be seeing him run those plays over and over again. But those are the two plays that he has. By the way, Tampa Bay, on Thursday, James Harrell, formerly of the Detroit Lions, a linebacker out of Florida, played out of Dawson and joined them. We may see him in there tonight. Terry now goes out of the lineup. Second down, seven to go. Ball at the 43 of Tampa Bay. Smith, the man in motion. Smith with the ball, knocked down in the backfield. What a play by Zach Henderson. Number 23, the free safety. Jim, this was supposed to be a reverse. In the back, you'll see Frederick coming in. Here's the, here's the play by Zach Henderson. Do you see number 82? That is Frederick. He was supposed to get the handoff, and it never happened. The safety came in, Zach Henderson. Against Denver last week, Henderson picked up a Denver fumble and went 50 yards for a touchdown. And here's a big play tonight. Third down and 14 from midfield. South. Looking way downfield and has his man downfield, Jim Smith. Dragged down by number 20, Warren Hanna. Tonight starting his first game at right cornerback, replacing Leon Williams. And Smith, who missed one earlier, picked up the first down to the 33. You know, I think it's sometimes it's good when you have a veteran wide receiver like Jim Smith drop a ball right at the beginning of the game because it seems like after that they never drop another one. Here comes Jim Smith in motion. Now, Staff's going to go back and watch what Smith does. He goes down, he reads his own defense. Now he's just going to hook up in front of Hannah. Bang, he gets the first down. You see the marker out there. Beautiful call and a great pass. Joy Jones, a man in motion. And straight ahead goes Cripp for not much. Across the 30 to the 29. And you can see down at the bottom there, Mike Clark, number 79, Paul Kurowski, 53, all getting up as the clock clicks below the six-minute mark in the first quarter. A safety of Wayne Peace on the second play from scrimmage in the end zone has given Birmingham a 2 nothing lead. Joe Chris. Every time he played a full season in the NFL, and there were three of those, he gained 1,000 yards or more. Only in one strike short in season that he gained less than 1,000 yards. be that he ran out of time, and if so, it's going to be second down and 12. Give us a chance now, if that's what he did, to say that Tommy Miller is our referee. Dave Foley out of Ohio State in the Buffalo Bills, the lineman, is our umpire. Headlinesman Hayden Terry, line judge is Stephen Morehouse. John Goldsmith is the back judge, side judge to right, right one, and second back down. is Bill Smith. Start his second down and 12. And on the feet as Raleigh Doss looks on from the far sideline, there's a lot of lightning in the area tonight. We had thunderstorms earlier, and they're all around us now. Raleigh hates lightning, like everybody else does. There's Cripps. But Stout still got the ball for Joey Jones. No good out of the end zone. Stout thought he had it just a little wrong. Jeff George, the corner man, was beaten by Joey Warren. Joey Jones, 
All right, let's just take a look at Sutton. Fake the cribs. It looks like it's a draw off the middle. And then all of a sudden, Sutton lays it out. It's a beautiful pass. The wind didn't hold it up. Look at how far Joey Jones has George Keith. But that's a great call right, by right. the official because neither foot was in bounds. Third down. Joey Jones got his first pro touchdown last week. Here is Stout. Under some pressure, he can run. But now he fires the ball and has his man in the middle of a wall of folks. And that is Jim Smith again. And he is inside the 15. It is another first down for Birmingham. Third and 12, and they get more than enough for the first. Jim, this is a sensational throw by Cliff Stout. Because he was on the run at the time, and at the last second, he sees Jim Smith. Now, he had enough room to maybe run for eight yards, which wouldn't have been enough for a first down. But he found Smith coming back from the experienced receiver, and they pick up the first down. They're inside the 15. 4.45 to go first quarter. Tampa Bay has had the ball for two plays only. One of those, a safety. Smith is now caught two and dropped one, and that was overthrown. Well, Warren Hanna also had his hand on the back on of the side. But remember, the ball, if it's not catchable, there's no sense to throw in the flag. Bobby Dodge's team lost to New Jersey 17 to 6 when Stout was intercepted twice in the opener. Since then, a back to Los Angeles, Pittsburgh, and Memphis. And over 85 is the place Joey Jones. buried at the 10 yard line and after all of that it's a gain of about three or four yards and James Harrell ex of the Lions last season has made his first tackle we told he'd get into the ball game he's 6'2 226 played out his option went to school to Florida wanted to play here ball look at the 10 it's third down and six how would you like to be Harrell sitting out there Jim with Joe Cripps because that's all that dancing you have no idea where he's going to go Smith wide to the right and Jones is back into the ball game to the left and forced him out and Harold got it and takes off his helmet so everybody can see him. <laughs> you like it? You're going to see Alonzo Johnson 58 is the first man to put the heat on Stout right there. There's Harold behind. Two linebackers flipping. Stout goes down for the loss. Now we have a field goal try. And here's the story itself. Danny Miller cut by Jacksonville two weeks ago. Last week had a 31-yard field goal. Seven for seven on conversions. A perfect night. Now taking into a strong win a 37-yard attempt. Lane, the quarterback holding, 37 yards out. Miller tries to say that he's good, but he's so good. And then this was that 37 yard field goal attempt. So the score remains 2 0. Birmingham on the safety of Pete Lee. Remember, top right boxing Thursday night at 9 Eastern time. Best field position of the night for Wayne Deep. He pulls out the football after the safety, throws it out of here, and completes the pass. Coming out is number 87. And that is Marvin Harvey, the big tight end. And Harvey will be spelled some time tonight by Carl Plank, a running back, number 32, out of Duke, who will play some tight end. Brett will hand and put him down. As you know from our Saturday telecast in that record-setting 54-6 to effort with Memphis, Birmingham uses four down linemen, two linebackers, and five backs. That's the standard defense. The fifth back is called the X-back. Spencer Jackson is in. For not much at all, goes Gary Anderson. Anderson last week against Denver was held at just 17 yards rushing. He's carried the ball twice tonight and might have two yards thus far. This is the number one rushing defense that they're going against. And conversely, Birmingham is also the number one rushing team. And now Paul Frank comes in as a, another tight end. They can use him slotted or they can use him in the backfield. Mike Burko is the defensive end, and he was the man that came down on the play along with Murphy, number 56, the linebacker. 
But just take a look at it. Here comes Anderson now. Boone is out of problem. But watch the swimming job right there by the defensive end, Merkel, and also by Murphy, number 56, the linebacker. It may be enough for a first down, but if so, it'll just be a first down. Here they come again. Now watch what's coming down the line of scrimmage. Merkel, number 69, is right there to make the tackle. They just nurse the ball across the 30-yard line. First down, Tampa Bay. They trail to nothing. There is Wayne Beach. 1984 senior ball, he was there. So were two other quarterbacks. Walter Lewis of Alabama, who now starts for Memphis. Frank Shire of Kansas, who now starts for Los Angeles. And Wayne Peach, who starts for Tampa Bay. Why not? He went to the University of Florida, but so did John Reed. Well, you've got Gillespie. They, everybody fears him because of his speed. Now, Martin Mark Harvey is on the inside. Now, watch Gillespie goes out. There's just nobody there at the point. When the ball gets here, take a look at the people converging. Number 21 is Dennis Woodbury. If there's a weak link in the defensive secondary of Birmingham, he's there. First time tonight, Gary Anderson is wide to the left as they slump back. Run, run. 
starting candidates tonight, Joe Chris and Gary Anderson, both on the same field. Well, Marvin Harvey, number 87, the tight end, gets out in front, and he gets the block. And just take a look. You'll see the sweep. Marvin Harvey is out there. So is Newton. See that block there by Harvey? That's the block. And also Boone getting downfield, number 21, gets an excellent block. He got that on, Woody, on Dennis Woodbury, number 21, and that enabled Anderson to get the first down. Pavilion and Gillespie, both to the left, are getting single coverage, as is Anderson on the right side. Here's Pete, and he's going, and down, falling down is Gary Anderson. That single coverage went down to the 15 turn and slipped. It's second down. Well, the field is wet. Now, watch Anderson. He's on Woodbury again downfield. Anderson just slips and falls down. You'll see the ball come by. But he was in a position to catch the football. 28 seconds left in this first quarter. Stallions up by two. And the kind of ball game we anticipated. Close. Hard fought. Two good teams, both 3-1. and one. New Orleans of the same division, 5-0. and oh, After the overtime win yesterday over Chicago. Here's Peace, the blitz is on, gets the ball away, and falling down to make the catch, and they say that he did, his pavilion, but now they say he did not, he dropped it. But it's the what? But right there, making the call, was Hayden Terry, the high headlinesman, and he said you dropped it. 18, now take a look at what where his hands are and what where the ball hit. Take a look at it. His hands, it hits his chest. Now the question is, did it hit him? But there was an official standing right in the in the right area to take a look at it. You got to see if the ball touches the ground at all. And right there, the ball is crap. I, I say the official made an excellent call. Even if he didn't, it's too close to call. I mean, you could call. That's a good call. Let's call it a good call. Third down and ten. He's lost it. And out of bounds. And then all of a sudden, it is going to be time for Big Z to come on. As it is fourth down and ten, and here comes Zena and Recession. The Vidian couldn't catch up to it. And Recession has been outstanding this year in the field goal department. He's not hit any of over 50 yards, but he is seven of eight thus far. This will probably be about a 44-yarder. He has tried one between 40 and 49 yards and has made it. I was watching before the game, and Andrew Sitchin was hitting the ball 50 yards out and clearing it very easily. But that's what this wins for. Let's call it a 43-yard attempt. By Andrew Sitchin, who's won three games for them this year, all three for this foot. is playing tonight later on against Michigan and Joe Chris down at the bottom there of course he's in this game most of those others have already played he's gotten 13 more yards so now he is really 359 yards and position to tee it up to kick it away to Lonnie Johnson in your left hand corner and Earl Gant in your right hand corner 12 seconds to go in the first quarter and that's Johnson flag is down on the kickoff as Johnson comes out of the end zone and gets out across the 20. But remember, a flag is down way back inside the 40. You would have to think that Tampa Bay was offside and they'll have to kick off again with three seconds to go. That's what it is. Jim, you know, I've been looking at kickoffs for the last for the first four weeks. Uh, and I've been team is offside, but only by a little bit, they don't call it, but this time the whole left side of the kicking team was offside. Well, you got to remember that against Denver last week, there were three kick returns of at least 50 yards. That was the average. They are so, as you take a look at the scoring drive, so up to here with what could happen on the return that Steve Spurrier has made a lot of changes on the special teams, the kicking team. He's just trying to contain Birmingham any way they can, and I think it's a case of over-eagerness because of what primarily happened last week. He has loaded up his own right side, and that's the side that was offside because the returns left killed him last week. And it was the right side with new people that just jumped offside. But out from the 30-yard line, that position will kick it off again. Same deep men. They loaded up so much to put James Carroll on a kickoff team. will 
takes this at the nine. And he's not coming to left. He's simply going straight ahead and gets the ball out across the 30 yard line as the quarter ends. You couldn't ask for a closer game. It is 3 2 Tampa Bay at the end of one quarter. We begin the second quarter. Jim Simpson, Paul McGuire live from Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay leads it 3 2. First down. Birmingham on their own 32. And stop looking out into Joe Prince. Prince is across the 35. A gain of three. It is second down and seven to go. Jeff George, number 33, came up to trip him up. James held in the ball game again. They were saying that set some kind of record. As you take a look at the first quarter statistics, Hell just arrived on Thursday, and here he's playing on Monday. Well, you know, take a look at time of possession. I don't think time of possession ever really makes any difference in a ball game. It's the score that makes a difference. Take a look at it. Three to two in favor of, of Tampa Bay and Birmingham to control the football. Second down. Grim trying to get outside. Quarterback coming up to make the fourth and does a good job across the way. Jarowski put it down, but Hannah did a super job from his right quarterback position, stringing out and forcing Chris to go wide. And Jarowski cut on the inside and made the stop. All right, let's take a look at 78, Buddy Atlanta. What he's doing is he's screening to the inside. That's Simmons. He's blocking number 74. Now he's, his job is to get out in front of the play in case Cribbs breaks it. Here comes Cribbs now. Number 59 is Battaglia. Number, he's a blocker. He's helping out on Perry. But what happens, the two men had to block one man, and Borowski comes in and makes the tackle. Third down and three from the 39 for Birmingham. Trailing by a point. Tonight. The crowd is booing because they figured that Trevillian didn't trap the ball moments ago and Smith did get away with something. Well, the one thing that Birmingham's doing, Jim, is that that's playing. Obviously, the official for there was a good call. They're putting Daryl Mason 81 at the tight end of the game, but they're going with three wide receivers, Kohler, Jones, and Smith, and it's confusing the defense and secondary. Up for 49. Not too big, 5-11, 195, just scoots across the left tackle spot and picks up four yards, second down and six from inside the 47-yard line. Jim, the, Tampa Bay is reading the offense so well. When you see the stack backfield in there with Leon Perry and Joe Chris, 30 and 20, the strong safety, which that time was McGoin, came right up on the line of scrimmage, and as soon as he sees that tight end blocked down, he splits it right now. And that's what's messing up the blocking combination for Birmingham. Yeah, the league comes in and rushing team, but having a hard go of it tonight. The big defense stops still with the ball. Goes across the middle, and Kohler makes the catch inside the 30 with five red jerseys around him. Stout puts that right on the money. If there's any question about Cliff Stout's arm, you can forget about it right now because you're absolutely right, Jim. I, you put, talk about putting the ball the only place it can be caught. Look from the end zone. When you see Stout looking downfield, he's looking to his left at Smith. All of a sudden, Polar breaks over, but watch the red shirts that are there. That's Sirowski, number 53, that's coming across the linebackers, but he goes between the linebackers and in front of the safety. 3-2, to two, Tampa Bay, but Birmingham driving with a first down. And there's Leon Perry stepping outside. Perry is short, but does he play a funnel? Perry is only 5'11", but is listed at 248. Maybe he weighs 6 or 7 pounds less, but that's still a smart point to come at you. And you know what happened, Zach? Doug Bedoin and Zach Henderson, the tough safety, they came up and said, wait a minute, we need some help with this load. Boy, he picked up six yards, Paul, takes it down to the 21, second and four. And let's see, I think the rain, if it is still here, is down to a drizzle, and I don't see any lightning, which is good news. That was James Harrell again, number 50. See him getting up there? Just joined the ball club. Detroit Lions lost to Goodwin. Why did he play out his option and come here? He's coming home. Back to the state of Florida. It's third down and a yard to go. There is Simmons. Yet another down lineman. All-American of Florida State coming in. Mason and Earl, the tight ends. Who gets it, Perry or Chris? 
22-yard rollout by Stout, who has now carried for five touchdowns this year and carried a rushing average of almost six yards per carry before tonight. Jim, when, when, when you've got receivers going out, this is a, an option run pass. You see Gant, you see Perry in front of him. You also see Buddy Adelette, number 78, in front of him. Buddy Adelette didn't have to block anyone. He just went into the end zone. Number 58, Alonzo Johnson never got there and Stout scores. And now the score is 8-3. to three. And let us see, because they're going to go for the two. That is obvious. Trying to get it up to a 10-3 field goal difference differential in the ballgame. against the number 12 
rushing defense in the league, whereas Anderson has carried four times for 12 yards against the number one rushing defense in the league. Well, with Birmingham, obviously, going to have to do They'll make an adjustment at halftime because they want to get the flow away from Cripps. They can't do that. So what they have to do now is forget, almost forget about Joe Cripps and start working in a passing area somewhere else and also Leon Perry. 4.25 to go to half. There's a flag down, and there might be a penalty against Tampa Bay as they hit the defensive man, allowing the ball to pop up. Jim, and it's an excellent call by the official. Let me just say this ahead of time. That's four coming down number 85. Now, watch what happens. Watch the left hand of the defensive back, which is George. You see it? Yep. He's got his arm around him before the ball gets there, and you cannot touch the man. You have as much right to the ball, but you can't touch the man for doing it. Good goal. And if you watch the USFL, you know it's 15 yards, automatic first down. Here and there's 17 seconds left on the clock. It's their first time out. So 
Well, Birmingham is going to call timeout on fourth down and 12 with 2.46 to go. So we'll call timeout, too. And now, Johnson has kicked the ball away. Another good-looking kick. Call for a fair catch across the way by Gary Anderson at the 12-yard line. 2.40 to go. First half, 10-3 the stadium's lead. Jim Simpson, and Paul McGuire, it's Monday Night Football Live on ESPN at halftime.com. Me standing by with the USFL stars in action. At the moment, Tampa Bay trailing by seven. At the ball, first and ten is their own 13. Gary Anderson gets some running room for the first time tonight and picks up about four yards before Fred Bohannon puts him down number 41. And they're going to go on a very quick count as you take a look at John Reeves. They've got the hurry up offense going. Ball is at the 17. They went for the hurry up offense and then they called time as they saw with the stupid warning. So they couldn't go with the hurry up offense. Let's hurry out of here. 10 3, Birmingham leading. In second down six, Tampa Bay showed the hurry up offense but got caught short by the two in the water. My favorite time in the ball game. Two minutes. And you got the referees and the umpires and all, of, all the officials put on their way on there. First down. A flag down back at the 20. Now another flag goes down after the play. Two flags on the play. First flag, Peach was, was beyond the line of scrimmage when he threw the pass. Second now flag. Second flag. Your guess is good or right. Clipping against the offense. So they're both against Tampa Bay. There's Fred Dean in your picture. He's Here we go. The hog. There's the illegal four task. And that's the one they'll take. As Steve Spurrier wipes the crowd, 151 to go. Take Willie G out. Take Willie G out. But the thing about it is, that, you know, Peace, when he was running with the ball, Jim, he had the first down. Had he continued to run with the ball, he could have been out of bounds. There, Haley's a pass beyond the line of scrimmage. Go off the down, third down. The other play obviously was against Tampa Bay, too. The other penalty downfield, Jim, so they, they took the, the loss of down play. Well, Willie G, meaning Willie Gillespie, has just come off. Jackson has gone in. He sets out wide to the right along with Eric Pavilion. On third and 11. The fake. He's back in the zone. End zone again. Dumps it out and, oh, my, going at him. Might have picked off that ball on the screen intended for Anderson. Would have gone right into the end zone had he been able to get there. Fourth down. It's a good thing that Fred Dean blocked Bohannon when he did because Bohannon would have had to, to pick it off and gone for the touchdown. And decision comes on now to kick from his own end zone. And the wind is a stiff wind. And if you look at one end of the field, it's going one way. At the other end, it's going the other way. So I can't tell. And decision looks like it's blowing the face. That holds it up pretty well there. He gets to the 42 yard line. 136 to go in the half. Birmingham was dominated on time of possession and leads in the game 10 to 3. A safety, a touchdown, a two point conversion. All right, now on first down plays, the clock will stop until the official gives the ready position. Birmingham, they still have two timeouts left. They've got excellent field position. <laughs> Wide to the right, Jim Smith to the left, Leon Terry, Joe Fritz the setback. I get Fritz out and throw the ball to him. Well, he's going out of the backfield now, but they didn't go to him. Look at them drill the ball in between to Smith. Again, two men around him and stout as they go in a hurry up off and simply drill the ball in there. That's got to realize that the clock stops now while he moves the chain, so he has time to call the play. He's calling the play. The official gives the ready. The clock starts now. Ball at the 31. Stop back again. Down and out again. Step again. Run out of bounds by Warren Hanna. That stops the clock. And that's another first down. And just like that, they're within the 20 yard line. Jim, he's just playing a catching game with Jim Smith. 
Just take a look at Scott. Scott, he's going to throw to Smith all the way. He's looking at him. He's looking left. He waits till Smith makes the break. Here comes the ball. Delivery is perfect. Steps up and watch this. Here's the timing. Smith turns. Here comes the ball. Nothing Hannah can do except knock him out of bounds. First touchdown pass that stopped through with the Steelers was to, you guessed it, Jim Smith. And there's Smith. That's the running room up the middle. And he's down inside the 10. Another first down, which will stop the clock while he moves to six. One eleven to go. It's first and goal to go. Birmingham. They've taken the ball with a minute and 46 seconds left to go in the second period. They reel off three first downs. There's still a minute and 11 seconds to go, and the clock now says that, that Birmingham has taken another one of their timeouts, so they've taken a timeout here. They've got one left. There is another game being played tonight, remember. Michigan is at Houston going on there, and Houston has jumped out in front of undefeated Michigan as Kelly, who just runs and shoots and runs and shoots, shot one to McGee for a touchdown, and the Gamblers lead the defending USFL champions with 11.37 to go, first quarter, 7 nothing. And here's our situation, 10 to 3. Tampa Bay, 10 comes back, of course. There's no guarantee the Stallions will score, but I guarantee you one thing. Around the state of Alabama and Birmingham, we're undefeated New Orleans, and Marcus Dupree come to town next Monday night. There's going to be a hot time at Old Legion Field next Monday. And it won't all be barbecue rip sauce. I know. We're going down to Dreamland. I can't wait to go down. Jim, with Stout and everybody key is Joe Cribs at this point, this is the time to run that same rollout thing. Play fake, fake Cribs back to one side, have Stout roll back out to his right. Now he has the option of either throwing the ball or running the ball. First down from the nine-yard line. Up by seven, looking to go up by 14. They almost relaxed on Stout, and he got down to the six. They saw him heading for the sidelines, and they almost gave up on it. Well, there's the play. It looked like it was in the huddle, didn't it? <laughs> they, they ran that play. They faked the Crips going one way, Stout rolled back to the outside. He picked up five yards on the play. One more. There's still a minute and four to go. They still have one timeout left. Run the play again. If they can't, if they're not stopping it, go after it one more time. The, the only loss. By Tampa Bay thus far has been by six points to Denver last week. They're down by seven now, and Birmingham at the end of this first half knocking at the door again. Second down from the five and a half. Takes the two, out, takes the two, puts the ball out of the end zone. And I want to tell you, Alonzo Johnson was really doing a job. You see Dale Mason, but no chance for him to get the ball. Stout just threw it away. He just strong-armed the ball. Stout was running to his left, being pressured by Johnson, and threw the ball out of the end zone. Heads-up football by the quarterback. Here it comes. There's the fake to Chris going back away from, from Stout. Now, he doesn't get the block on the outside. There's Johnson there, but watch this strong-arm the ball. Mason knows he can't get it. Throws the ball away. That was some 35 yards just pushing it out. Third down and five to go. Down, he gets up saying, hey, wait a minute, Hannah did something to me. But they said, no, nope, didn't touch it. It's fourth down, here comes the field goal kicking team. It looked like that old alley-oop play pass play they were going to throw to Smith in the end zone. And what Smith did, he lagged down and then broke it back to the inside. There's Holding. Whoop, Smith has a legitimate well, That is Holding by Hannah. I think what happened there, the official was on the outside of the play looking from behind them and did not see that arm around there. In any event, here's a 22-yard field goal attempt by Danny Miller, who missed on a field goal attempt of 43 tonight. 22-yard kick is good. And with 52 seconds to go, it is now 13-3. to But in a manner of speaking, number one, they didn't get a touchdown. Number two, Hannah wasn't called in the end zone for holding. Tampa Bay dodged the bullet. They certainly did. That was definite holding by the defensive backs. Off 
comes Danny Miller. He is quite a story, as we said, cut by Jacksonville. Now take a look. We talked about these three former quarterbacks in Florida. Spurrier, the coach, sets the record. That's the first column. Reeves, the man he bets tonight, came along and broke Spurrier's record. And then along came Wayne Peace to break the completion record of both those men. And they're the three men in the ballpark tonight. Spurrier, the coach, Reeves tonight in the role of backup quarterback and Peace, who has started. Now, if they have to, they can always go to Spurrier. <laughs> Here is Daddy Miller kicking off. With 52 seconds to go. Good kick off. Ricky Wittes with the ball at the line. And Wittes gets out to the point. 48 seconds to go. Here comes the offense again. Three timeouts left for Tampa Bay. And you wonder, Paul, now here is Peace, admittedly against the number one team against the rush. He hasn't moved the ball club. The team is down by 10. Do you stick with your decision to go with the rookie in the second half, or do you say, well, maybe we need John Reed back after all to get some offense going? I think there's... I have a feeling there may be a change in that, depending on what he does for this drive here. Here's Peace on first down. Firing the ball out, and he's got a man wide open across the way, and that is Marvin Harvey, the tight end. Number 87. And Harvey gets the ball up to the 29-yard line, and it's second down and one. 44 seconds for that 22-yard field goal. The impressive thing is, remember, that the touchdown drive of Birmingham ate up within seconds of nine minutes off the clock in the second quarter. And Birmingham will give the short pass because every time they throw one, about eight seconds goes off the clock. He's the big to Anderson. Anderson held up, so he's got the one he's close to. Now he finds it coming out of the backfield. Little move there, but Anderson is down first down. Anderson was held up at the line of scrimmage. Pete was looking for him, and finally he broke loose. And they're going to use one of those times up, Paul. With 30 seconds to go. Now that our piece just took a look, he was going to take time out, but remember the clock stops again as the change moves, so Peach is going to wait, he's going to take it, he's going to call the play now, but the, the clock is back in. I don't know why they didn't use one of them. They got three. Here's Peach again. Looking, time going off the clock, coming back to Pavilion. Pavilion inside the 40 to the 35 with 14 seconds to go. Time out, Tampa Bay. Ricky Ray. And now, the clock would stop anyway, but Peace is coming to the sideline after the catch, the first of the night by Trevillian. Well, first of all, let's take a look at the pass protection. you got a four-man rush, no linebackers are coming. Now, K-9, Newton, Foot, Dean, and Spike are all blocking very well. He has plenty of time. There is double coverage on Eric Trevillian. But once he gets the ball and he starts breaking it, there's Ricky Ray, everybody else is chasing he has time to get the ball inside, well, right at the 35-yard line, so at least they may be able to get a field goal out of this. But they still, you know, Tim, I would, even though the pass is completed, they really do. If you have three timeouts, well, you know once, once the ball is set, if the official's going to go on the ready, that means that you're going to, by the time you're calling play, six, seven seconds are going to go off the clock, and you don't have that time. they still got two timeouts to use in the last 14 seconds. Quarterbacking talent there, Reeves, Spurrier, and Peace, all in one group. They wrote the books at the University of Florida up in Gainesville. Peace is back out, civilian walking toward the huddle. The ball is at the 35, first down with those 14 seconds left. Amazing. The man we have not even heard from this evening is Greg Boone. Number Gary Wallace. What did Raleigh Don say? The man who scares me is Boone. Boone. Well, that's this situation. You've got to figure they're going to throw every time. Peace for the sidelines, making the cut. Not in time is Willie Gillespie. There's John Reed along the sideline. Incomplete. Supported by Wayne Peets as he started as a veteran this year. The night supporting Peets because Peets as the rookie has started. Ten seconds to go. Second down. We told you three starting quarterbacks out of our 1984 coverage of the Senior Bowl are all starting quarterbacks now in the USFL. Walter Lewis of Memphis, Sire of Los Angeles, and now Wayne Peace tonight. And Reeves, oh, Peace on the side. Look, at, let's get at least three out of here because we have to score twice anyway. Over the middle, and got his man, Gillespie, thrown down by Herbie Spencer. And they'll stop the clock at the 25 with five seconds to go. They can't wait. 
They've got to kick it away now. And this will be better than 40 yards, around 42 for Anderson, who, as we told you, is one for one in this range. And the position tonight has already kicked the field goal of 43 yards going the other way. This will be just about the same distance, 43 yards. How many times have you ever seen the flags at either end of the field, Jim, blow opposite direction? And the funny thing is, as windy as it was up here before the game, I feel no wind up here at all. It's just going out either end of the stadium. Lots of light before this game. Lots of rain before this game. Raleigh Dodson along the sideline. He went to Michigan State. And had all those good years, among other places, at Pittsburgh with the Steelers going to those Super Bowls. And some of the plays you see in his offense remain Steeler plays. And after this drive by Pete, yeah, I don't think the Spurrier will make the change at halftime. Okay, now, is it going to be Birmingham to call time out? Yep, they want to end the position to think about it a little bit longer for those five seconds. And so let's just take a look at what has happened here. Not a great deal of scoring thus far in this post ball game. And the first score, of course, was on the safety when Gugliari had Klein tackled piece of the end zone to make it 2 0 Birmingham. But then position put Tampa Bay briefly in front with that 43 yard field goal. And then in the second quarter came the nine minute drive, really eight minutes and 51 seconds. Before, South ran it in from two yards out and then threw to Joy Jones for the two-point conversion. And then Miller added the field goal, and that's where we are right now. At 13-3 with position trying to make it 13-6. 42-yard drive. his field goal of 22 yards and that made it 13 to 3 because this is what Tampa Bay did. Jim, I looked at your, at your Birmingham possessions where they had the field position. Take a look at where Tampa Bay got the ball. The 3, 21, 20, 12, and 9. The first one was a safety. Then they got the field goal by Andrew Sitchin. And then the intercepted punt and another missed field goal just before the half. But they've had I think the key to the whole thing when you look at the possessions, look at the field position. No place to work with. Wayne Peace apparently to start the second half as he started the first half. There is one other game going on, remember, and it started an hour after our game did. Undefeated Michigan, the USFL champions, are down in Houston for a game with the Gamblers. And our information is that Kelly has thrown yet another touchdown pass with 10 seconds left in the half, and Houston has gone in front of Michigan 14-7 at the half. There's the Birmingham Stallion team up by 10 points with a half yet to play. And Steve Spurrier, the head coach of the Tampa Bay Bandits on this side, his team, which has only lost by five points in its one loss, has won three games by three. Denver got 36 on them last week. Jacksonville 25 the week before. Birmingham has 13 tonight. The big deal is that Tampa Bay hasn't gone through the end zone yet. Here's Danny Miller to kick off. The Tampa Bay team is not yet on the field. Now they're breaking on the field. Ricky Williams, along with Jim Fitzpatrick. There is Fitzpatrick, just activated for this game. Three-year veteran now of Illinois State. And here's Danny Miller to kick off. I guess that our rain and lightning is gone for the night. I hope so. It was right at the game's beginning. This is Ricky Williams. Oh, he lets the ball go out of bounds. And that's a big break for Tampa Bay because it'll go back to the 30-yard line. Now, had he touched that, would have been a different ball game altogether, but he did not touch it. Now they're marking it as though he did touch it. Yes, he did touch the ball. The ball hit him on the leg, I believe. But they're going back to kick it again, Paul. So, so... They're going to go back, and there's no call here. Let's just see if we can see it. All right, here comes the ball down. There's Williams there. Does the ball hit his leg? No, it does no, not. No, it doesn't. 
Good call. Officials are right on top of it again. So they'll move it back to the 30-yard line, and Miller will kick off one more time. And a circus show here at halftime, complete with not lions and tigers, but certainly a tiger and an elephant. Stage coaches. Here's Miller to kick off. They had all of that. Now what the bandits and their fans want is some points. Driving kick, and this will be Fitzpatrick at the 13. Across the 30. Well, they got killed by a kickoff returns last week, but there's a good kick roll for Judd by the bandits. And Wayne Peace comes out with outstanding field position. The ball is at the 39-yard line. First It'll time. be Peace and Gary Anderson and Greg Boone in the backfield. Trevillian, Gillespie, and Jackson alternate as the wide receivers. Marvin Harvey got some catches in the first as a tight end. Mike and Kani, Dean and Newton, foot to center. Gary Anderson looking for running room. He's got some. This fella can move and get the first down inside the 45. Tackled by Chuck Clanton, the free safety. That's his best run of the night. And remember, it's against the number one rushing team in the league. This is a draw play to Gary Anderson where he picks the hole. Once he sees the blocking, there's Perko number 69. He's way to the outside. Anderson gets that open field. Bohan at 41 misses him, and finally Clanton number 24 brings him down. Up the 44, first down. second catch of the night, and that is another first down, inside the 35, down to the 33-yard line. Dennis Woodbury is covering one-on-one -on, -one on Willie Gillespie, but watch the hands of Willie Gillespie. Woodbury's not even in the picture. Take a look at it. Great hands, total concentration to cradle that ball in. Here's the pass by Peace, throws it wide to the outside. Woodbury, you can see him, he's way to the inside, not even in the screen now. First down. Begins to move on Raleigh Dodge's number one defense team against the rush. Jim. Nad Newton, number 61. Watch him with Prune on the outside. They double team and just blow the linebacker Murphy completely out of the play. Finally, the tackle by Dave Purfoy, number 75, gets her, but that's another first down. Remember. Birmingham held Herschel Walker to 43 yards, Kevin Nelson to 50, Mike Rozier to 52, and Anderson is on a roll tonight, well over 40 yards. First down, the fake to Anderson, and they throw out here wide to the left side where Trevelyan makes the catch, and put down by number 27, Ricky Ray. For those of you who have the facility, you know it. For those of you who do not, we will tell you. This, as we inaugurated it some time ago, this game is being telecast with the audio in stereo. Another first here on ESPN. You can hear both sides of the stadium if you have your stereo set up. Covidian wide to the right. Gillespie and Anderson left. Peace throws it out there, and Trevillian can't get to it. It is third down. The man on the sidelines, Paul, has absolutely lost the context of what down it is. He's about to flip to two. Somebody better check him over there. He's just trying to help Tampa Bay out. It's third and five, and he's got it second and five. It is sometimes confusing because I, I would imagine it's kept on the sidelines and Peace knows what the down and distance is, but it is third and five. Now he's changing. Now he's changing. He got it. Gillespie left and Trevelyan right. Trevelyan in the slant pattern. Long count. No flag. Peace running. 
He's going to pick it up on his own. He's going to. And gets out of bounds. And they mark it just short. I do believe. Decision time for Spurrier. If they do mark it by that much. And that's what Pete says it is. And Spurrier's not sending his men off to kick the ball. They're sending instead another tight end, Carl Franks. Hey, on that play, Chuck. Clanton, number 24, the defensive weak safety, closed on Peace faster than anyone I've seen in a long time. He's the man that saved the first down. Two tight ends. Known and Anderson, the setbacks, and inches to go. Pointed and we had it. The official said, nope, they've got it. First down. Very definitive move by Tommy Miller, the referee, very quickly to say, first down, Tampa Bay. They trail 13 to 3, 11 10 left in the third quarter. Well, they had to get the ball to the 12, and they got it to the 11 and a half, so that is a first down. Gillespie well, comes back in with a play. You can see Boone 21. Here comes Revillian out to this side. Gillespie to the far side. Anderson slotted to the right. Best drive of the night for Tampa Bay. Here's Peace putting it up, and nobody's going to get there. Gillespie and Woodbury going for it, and nobody to get there. Second down and ten. Don't you love receivers? Every time they run that, that streak pattern, when they're down close to the goal line, and they get just touched, the first thing they do is they look at the official. But that makes no difference. There's no way the Gillespie would have ever gotten to the ball anyway. Here comes Spencer Jackson in with a play for Wayne Peace. And that'll bring out Gillespie. So Jackson goes to the right, and Trevelyan comes to the left. And again, Anderson slotted to the right on second and 10. Ball inside the 15. Knee straight drop. There's a for Pavilion incomplete. Ricky Ray there. Ball was by before Ray made contact, in my opinion, and apparently that was the opinion of the officials. They're, the officials had some tough calls. Now, Ricky Ray is playing one-on-one -on, -one on Eric Trevelyan. Watch the move he makes. Now, the question is, was the ball catchable? The ball was too high for the play. Rick Gray was there. Third down. Gillespie comes in. Steve Spurrier. Look at the smile on his face. That's not a smile. I, that's that's that thing where, where ulcers build up. Third and nine, and he is sent in the play with Gillespie, who comes out wide to the right. Slotted to the right, actually, with Anderson here on the left side. They're looking for Anderson in the end zone. Are they calling? Tampa Bay looked like they were going to go for two. But on that play, Harvey is a tight end. Clanton, Chuck Clanton, number 24, the weak safety was covering along with Herb Spencer, number 55, and Harvey was just short. Well, let's see what happened here. The score is no good. Uh, motion is called. And I'm not quite sure about that, but that's what I didn't hear what uh, Tommy Miller said, but he gave the old motion penalty there, so we'll just say that they're in motion. 13 to 9, the score, Birmingham, third quarter. Well, what happened is Tampa Bay came out right away and huddled up and, and didn't huddle up and try to kick the extra point in a hurry. They had movement in the line. The ball never got to the to the man, the holder, and the, and the kick was no good. So they refused the penalty. Gannon and Johnson are the deep men. And there's Earl Gant out of Missouri inside the 10. Flags go down as Gant gets across the 25-yard line. Now keep one thing in mind as Birmingham men fall down, and I don't know whether they're hurt, and I'm sure now one is hurt. We'll check on who it is. 
across the way. Is that Leon Perry? Their big pullback started to get up and went right back down again. Started to say also that Tampa Bay really was horrendous a week ago as we see the penalty stepped off against Denver on kickoff returns. And tonight they've done a fair job of containing with new men. Now let's listen to Tommy Miller. Where will we All right. The penalty there was in Herbie Spencer. Here's the touchdown again. All right. Peace is going to move out. He's going to fake the boom. Boone's going to come out and get a block on the outside. That's Perko, number 69, he's blocking on. And then Peace finds Marvin Harvey coming across underneath. You see 24 is Clanton. No way to get to him. He just beat the free safety. Here it comes again. Boone gets an excellent block on Perko on the outside. And then you see Clanton trailing Harvey. There's no chance. No chance. In the meantime, Ken Tolan comes in to replace Leon Perry, who walked off the field. First down, ball of the 17-yard line. Joey Jones in motion. And Cribs is up to about the 20-yard line. A four-point ball game, 13 to 9. There's the scoring drive. Four minutes from the opening kickoff of the second half. Wayne Peace with an impressive drive. Perry is now back in the ball game. I thought when I saw him go down, Paul, I thought it would be a long time before he got back in this game tonight. Well, you got a guy, one, one play. Well, you got a guy that big, Jimmy, just rattle his bones around a little bit, get all the stuff put back in spots, and then he's all right. You are cruel. <laughs> Here's a big to Chris. Stout throws it underneath to Perry, and he doesn't hold on the ball, taking quite a hit from Alonzo Johnson. Johnson very much in evidence tonight. The Birmingham staff, make no mistake about it, have great respect for the linebackers of Tampa Bay. Well, that time, Stout hesitated just a little bit too long to throw the ball to Perry. And what they called Jim is he hung him out to dry. 9.43 left. I wonder if Richard Curry, head coach of New Orleans, 5-0, with these two teams trailing at the moment, 3-1, watching tonight in Louisiana, knowing he's got to face Birmingham next Monday night. Third down and seven to go for Birmingham. Big play, and they got to give it back to Tampa Bay. Stout's going to run right up the middle for the first down. He's got it and takes the slide. Takes the slide, put down there by Zach Henderson, who is a big hitter. Henderson just made sure, extra sure, that Stout was down, but moved the sticks up to the 33-yard line. First down, Birmingham. All right, let's just take a look at the right side of the offensive line. That's Turner and Sandin. Blocking and watch what stops that. As soon as he sees there's no one to throw the ball to, bang, right up the middle, and he just goes down and takes that, that little slide here. But he also took a great hit by uh, Zach Henderson. Quick out over here to Joey Jones at the 39 yard line. A pickup of six yards on the play, second down and four. What I really like about Joey Jones, now here's a small receiver, 5'8", 165 pounds. They said he'll go across the middle, but his total concentration on the ball, Jim, is, is just unbelievable. When you're that small, you got to make sure you catch him, and he gets the ball and he gets out of bounds. But the ball was thrown kind of out and away from him. Joey Jones kept the presence of mind to make sure he makes the catch first. Johnson was tugging, tugging, and then finally got some help. And it'll be third down and short, about two yards to go. At the moment, Toller and Smith are the wide receivers, and checked out as Toller and Jones are bringing in the plays from the sideline. And you can see Johnson going out. side of that defensive line. There's Butler, 77. He reads the play, moves back in, but you're absolutely right, Jim. It was Northrend, number 68, and Clark, number 79, that jammed it in. Here comes Tripp. Now you find out what it's like when there's just no place to run. 
Nordgren, number 68, is the man that did the job. Kicking the ball away, Skip Johnson. Tell you, he has been under fire, but he has kicked very well in the game three series. There's Gary Anderson being run out of bounds at the 25 yard line. 7.28 to go. Tampa Bay's got the ball back. They trail by four. Ball at the 25 yard line, Tampa Bay, 13 to 9, Birmingham, third quarter, 722 to go. would come out and try to put a lot more heat on Wayne Pace. But what happens, you're seeing Eric Trevelyan, he's going to run through that secondary all by himself. They're playing his own defense. Here comes Trevelyan. You don't see any white shirts at this point. Now, Clanton's coming to chase him. David Evans, number 26, the X-back, is coming to chase him. And finally, Ricky Ray, number 27, knocks him out of bounds. But Pace, they're not putting enough heat on him. They're not getting to Pace with the four-man rush. They're going to have to start sending some linebackers. From the 44, first down. Impressive first drive put together by Peace in this half. Trying to get another one going. Looping at a flag down, and it may be. Let's see what happened, because Trevelyan was bumped as he came off the line of scrimmage. Now, you're allowed to give him a check in the first five yards. That may not be it, but let's see what's called. No, it's a legal procedure of motion or formation. I wanted to get something in as they step off or decline this ball. 89 yards by the New Jersey Generals is the most rushing in four games against Birmingham, the league leader. Already tonight, Tampa Bay has reeled off 80. So the running ball is going to Don't miss all the... At 875, 20... You know, I said that they're going to have to blitz that time. Birmingham sent both inside linebackers, Herb Spencer and Murphy, both blitz that time, and they put the heat on Wayne Peace. Second down and ten. Here they come again. That's Anderson not going anywhere. He lost there. Mike Murphy, number 56, made the stop. Jim, this was the flea flicker. They were going to give the ball to Anderson. He never was going to toss it back to Wayne Peace, and he never had a chance. The linebackers were there. And it's third down and about 14 to go. So for the moment, barring a big play here, Tampa Bay's drive has been stopped. Gary Anderson, you know, all the other times I ran that play, I was able to run up in the line and turn around and throw the ball back to, to Reeves. He and sudden. Joe Cripps tonight have had their moments of not going anywhere except backwards. It is third and 14. And Peace is going to be dragged down a sack made across the way by Dave Purifoy, the right defensive end. Who played some ball, a lot of it with the Packers and Lions, and that's a big play. Now remember, the real line of scrimmage is at the 44, but now they got the ball back at the Tampa Bay 41. Now watch what happens. Purifoy goes to the outside. K-9 is number 70 trying to get him. Wayne Peace was going to roll to the outside, Jim, but Purifoy played the containment like the defensive end is supposed to do and stopped him. And now Andrew Sisson to kick the ball away, and Frederick is there at the 20. And down he goes. Written down. That is number 28 as a flag is down. Doug Bedoy offside. Birmingham. It is still a kicking situation. You take, you take the play. Let it go. Take the play and go. So they really drove him back and they were going to take the play. So that puts the ball back inside the 20-yard line. 6.01 to go, third quarter. Birmingham's got the ball in the lead, but barely 13 to 9. Number 24, and that is how it was carried as 24. Well, what Frederick is going to catch the ball, and then Dwayne Anderson is the man number 26 to make the tackle. And it's not fun being a return man if you don't get blocked. note that Wayne Anderson is now 26, not 24. There's Battaglia a week ago, number 59 there, an offensive lineman a week ago. He lined up in a tight end position and stout threw him a touchdown pass against Memphis. 
An interior lineman catching a ball for a touchdown. He loved it. Second down and 10 from the 20. There is no finger throw. some defense. Simmons that time playing the nose tackle, playing in, in the uh, four-man front, and what happens when the guard pulls, he just followed the guard down the line of scrimmage, and it took him right to Joe Fritz. That other game, Houston and Michigan down in Houston is quite a game, too, in the Astrodome, 14 to 10. Boyovich has just kicked the 22-yard field goal. But Houston is in a matter of time. And nobody's going to get it. It's fourth down. They'll have to kick it away. Tampa Bay will get it back. 5-11 to go. Third quarter. They're down by four. And they're playing a rookie quarterback tonight. And here's Skip Johnston still under pressure. But he has been kicking well tonight. Anderson, the deep man, at the 35. It is so obvious that Tampa Bay has done their homework as far as the running game is concerned, and it looks like Birmingham is going to have to go to the pass. 11 men on the line of scrimmage for Tampa Bay. And that is not a good kick. Anderson, a fair catch, but in the territory of Birmingham. Get Johnson. Didn't hit that one. Up the 49-yard line of Birmingham, Tampa Bay, which has dominated this third quarter with 4.58 to go, has a chance for its third drive of the quarter. Out of Indiana, Pennsylvania, comes up with the Anderson fumble and one of the rare turnovers in this game tonight. Jim and Anderson had the hole. We would have seen him in the open field. He just doesn't get a hold of the football. Cogliari, 95, is falling behind. The ball just pops out of his hand. He really wasn't hit. Then he overran the ball. Cogliari does what all smart defensive linemen are supposed to do. Don't try to pick up the ball. Just fall on it. Now Stout has his first good position in the field of the second half. On the 49, the fake the quiz, puts it up deep for Joey Jones. Jones there, makes the catch. It's first and goal to go. Joey Jones, a very short man, five, six feet, the rabbit five feet, eight, gets the six one George and made the catch. What concentration, Paul. Jeff George just fell on the ground. He said, I cannot believe that he had perfect coverage on Joey Jones. Watch this over-the-shoulder catch. I told you about this man in concentration. He kept his elbows in tight, and the ball hit right on his forearm, Jim, and that's where he held the ball. Oh. Take a look at where he catches it here. Jeff George can't play it any better than he's playing it here, number 33, but watch where this ball hit. Right on in his elbows. He just tucked his elbows in. Tremendous concentration. A fumble by Anderson, a long pass by Stout, and Perry trying to get into the end zone and does not make it. Second down and goal to go. He picked up one and a half. I, I just sit there and laugh because Leon Perry knows he's 248 pounds, 5 feet 11 inches tall, and he knows that he's got to keep the leg drive because he's going to get hammered when he goes to the goal line. Here they come. Here comes Perry. Now watch the sudden stop. Excuse me? And then everybody wants to rip his throat out. They have taken Krebs out and put an old Gant in, a bigger man. They give old Gant the ball, and Gant does not get the touchdown. That play, Paul, doesn't look like it had any real zip to it. It looked as old Gant. Now they're saying, whoops, let's hold it. They're not saying much, are they? They're doing. That was James Ramey, number 78. And he's not very happy. Tell you what, you don't want a penalty if you're Birmingham down there to move you back 15 yards, whereas for Tampa Bay, it wouldn't hurt a bit. They'd move it just a half a foot. You've got to run 
you got to run Leon Perry in there, and I, I, I still believe this is two down situations where you, you're up by four points. Field goal only puts you up by seven. And if you turn the ball over, you give it to them on the, on the one foot line coming out. So I, if they don't make it here, you go again. Third and one, Cribs has come back in for Gant. up the score. That makes it 19 to 9. <laughs> Go get him, Leon. Here comes Leon Perry, all 248 of them. The blocking is just superb in the line of scrimmage. And look at the man that's out in front of him is number 20, Joe Cribbs, getting a block on Kelly Kirchbaum, 51. You'll see Perry here. It comes along the line of scrimmage, but number 20, Joe Cribbs, knows that Perry sticks his head in for him. Why not do it for Perry? Birmingham, the big break on the interception. The great catch by Joey Jones, despite the excellent coverage of Jeff George. Danny Miller had to have the extra point, and he's got it. And with 2-11 to go, third quarter, it is 20 to 9. Tom Meese keeps you apprised of what's going on inside the USFL on Friday night, Jody SPM. Miller to kick off. It's a short kick. And it's taken by Ricky Williams. And Williams gets across the 30, breaks loose. And it's finally wrestled down by Danny Miller. And also Robert Gentry, number 34. Take one more look at the touchdown. Here's Stout handing the ball off, and, and the man out in front, which I give a lot of credit to, is Joe Crift, who gets a block on Kelly Kirchbaum, 51. But old Perry, he's in the end zone. He went to bust, he went to bust the ball and lost it. From the 41-yard line, 49 yards after the fumble, big catch by Joey Jones. Leon Perry took it in. That's the last scoring drive, and here's Wayne Keith. <laughs> Picked up a yard, second down and nine. Jim, they're going to have to call this in the grasp, and I think it's Dave Purifoy that had it, had peace. There's no question about it. I mean, even though he shovels the ball away, Dave, Dave Purifoy comes in over Kani. Take a look at him on the outside. Now, you see, first of all, there's holding. Why well, that isn't called, I don't know, because the official's there. But That's Purifoy the grasp. has it. That's the grasp. All right, they go very quickly from the 35. We still have a score of that Houston-Michigan game going on. They've hit with Cuban and Mark. I'll give you that in a moment. Big mm -hmm. late in the afternoon. Okay, Here's Pete on second down and long and across the way. Wow, Marvin Harvey. There's a flag thrown on Herbie Spencer. But now, that's for Tampa Bay. It's going to be a penalty against Birmingham. Let me very quickly say that the audience won an overtime yesterday to be 5-0. and oh. Michigan is playing at Houston tonight to be 4-0, and oh, but they're trailing 14-10 to 10 with two minutes to go to Houston. All right, here's a play. Now, you see Harvey has already stepped out of bounds right here. Now, he's stepping out of bounds again, and Spencer, Herb Spencer, comes all the way across the field and nails him. Now, in the, just in the defense of Spencer for a second. Now, if the whistle has been blown here and Spencer keeps taking a run at him, if it's a judgment call by the official, but you've got to understand something. Spencer is not looking at the line. He's looking at the man with the ball. And Martin had already, or rather Harvey, had already stepped out of bounds and had come back inbounds and was still running in Spencer Belden. Good call by the official because you can prevent any injuries to players. From the 45-yard line, first and 10, and here they come. Whether they brought off sides or not. One minute, nine seconds to go, third quarter. 20 to 9, Birmingham. Jim, unless there was movement in the line, we've got so many great calls in here, there is movement in the line. Because the center put, put the ball in Peace's hands and then brought the ball back down, so he actually put the ball in play. They're going with Chris Foot tonight, not Lee North. Number six to through the center. Chris Foot. Take a look at Foot. Watch where the ball is. He, no, I, I thought he put it in his hands. He did. Now, from up here, it looked like he did, but Foot did move the ball and put it down. Excellent call again. From the 50 yard line, first and 15. <laughs> with his third 
completion of the year. Takes the ball back to the 43-yard line. And the rookie out of Auburn to stop the rookie out of Florida, Wayne Peace. Yeah, Wayne Peace never read the weak safety plan on the play. Clinton just played center field and stole the ball. Peace never saw him, never took a look at him. He was going to throw the ball downfield to his left. He has time. Clear voice coming, but he's not even close. You see Peace unload the ball. But on the other end of the field, Chuck Plant was just sitting there waiting on it. Second turnover and the last two lines by Tampa Bay. One of Bumble, this is the interception. Now, now. Now, thanks to Joe Fred. Scout looking for somebody to throw to, and now it's kind of down to Ronald Simmons. I think he was going to throw the ball out of bounds anyway. James Ramey knocked it down. Number 78. You watch Fred Nordgren, number 68. He thought that the ball might have been a fumble. He was chasing all over the field for the ball. That's hustle. 28 seconds left in this fast third quarter. 20 to 9, Birmingham. And both teams are 3 and 1. Birmingham has won its last three in a row. Tampa Bay against Denver last week lost its first of the year. I believe it was a lineman who put his hands up to get it. But Dowdy, I believe, who caught a touchdown pass, might have thought he was eligible again. And maybe he was. But let's see what's going on here. I would doubt it on this situation. But Dowdy did put his hands up to get the football. the ball. Lost a down on it. Now see that. He caught a touchdown pass last week. and figured, I'm a receiver now. And he put his hands up to catch the ball. Well, you know, when you're a lineman, you know you can't. I mean, it's in a confused situation because sometimes he does play tight end. But when that little brown ball is coming at you, give it, it looks like a big, fat melon that you want to grab the tag. said, hey, if I caught one a week ago and I can grab this screen, even though it's not to be, maybe they won't notice I'm at 59. Third down and 10 to go. The ball is the 43 of Birmingham. Last moments of the quarter. And on comes the kicking team for Birmingham. The blitz was on. Stout had to unload. The blitz was on in a hurry. We've got now. We've got both teams. We've seen Birmingham blitzing Tampa Bay. Now we've got now we've got the other side. Tampa Bay blitzing. Here's Orgren. He's a nose tackle. He's playing on Banks. He's the center. He didn't know that's Battalion. Now, excuse me, the guard. <laughs> but Battalion is knocking his socks off. What happened is Orgren. <laughs> Push this helmet out of the way. I would love to see that again. <laughs> That's a classic trying to get his helmet back on so I can see. And then Battaglia smashing him again. Yes, Skip Johnson did not have a good kick last time. That's better. And Anderson calls the mirror catch at the 17-yard line. What is first and 10 for Tampa Bay. 12 seconds to go, third quarter. Life and times of a nose guard. This is a now, great here's Battaglia. He's playing on, on Nordgren, 68. Now watch. See Nordgren? Now watch his helmet. He's trying to get it back <laughs> in his face. And then Battaglia hits him again. <laughs> Not that. And again. And one more time. And look at Nordgren. He's swinging his fist. Ah, oh, you love it. Go get him, Freddy. You love it? Oh. Oh, my. That is the first quarter. What a replay. And what a game. Birmingham leads 20 to 9, but Tampa Bay has got the ball back. We begin the fourth quarter. I'm Jim Simpson with Paul McGuire. It's 20 to 9. Birmingham, down at the Astrodome, Michigan, finally leads for the first time tonight. A Bear has hooked up with A.C. Anthony Carter for an 11-yard touchdown pass with seconds to go in the half and lead by three. He's got the first down across the 30-yard line. Herb Spencer, who was called for knocking him out of bounds before, makes a little legit hit right there and puts him out again. All right, Birmingham goes to two linebackers and an X-back. This X-back right here is David Evans, number 26. Not only does he misread the play, but he also misses the tackle. From the 32. 
Big experiment tonight by Steve Spurrier starting a rookie quarterback against a tough, tough Birmingham team. Thus far, it's only paid off with one touchdown. And a field goal. He's going to run and it's going to be dragged down. Get back to the line of scrimmage. Mike Perko with the first in at number 69. And it is second down and long. Nearly 10 yards. I've got to say something for the offensive line, and that's K9, Newton, Foot, Dean, and Pike. That time they had a full scale blitz on with both linebackers coming, four defensive linemen, and they picked it up, but Peace didn't have anybody to throw the ball to downfield, so he started to run with it. Again, as you look at those statistics, we understand from some of our viewers that they love the stereo, and it sounds very good with this good crowd here at Tampa Bay. ESPN Pioneer, whoops, they got Marvin Harvey in the wrong spot. He moves to the other side. Second down play. Here's the ball, unable to control it. Here's Gary Anderson. Look at Steve Spurrier. You don't think he's on this ball game? Thinking of what to call next. Now he's got the idea in mind. Well, that's Jimmy Jordan with the headset on number 15. Tough the situation there. Win three in a row. And in danger of losing your second in a row. And things don't get any easier because they've got to go to Philadelphia next week. But a lot of time left. 13 43. But this is a third and ten play. went down. Herbie Spencer helps him up after putting him down. And holding is going to be called against Tampa Bay, but that was third and ten. And they're likely to say kick the ball back to us. All right, Dave Purifoy, I think, is the man that's going to be held. K-9 number 70 is all over him. Take a look at it. Here's K-9. Purifoy is going to the outside. Now look at what he's by. <laughs> that's a new dance step that we haven't seen in a long time. But watch Purifoy. He gets up Presence the mind to find the quarterback, and now look what happens. He comes in, he gets help from Spencer on the outside. Also, Murphy, 56, the linebacker. Well, he's is lifting off on that right leg. Or knee and John Reeves right there may have a chance on the next down, but they're going to have to kick the ball away. Fourth down, they took the play with the Eastern side boy. And Frederick leading the lead. And kick return. Smuts decides to call for fair catch at the 41. Birmingham has the ball back and they have the lead. Don Reeves along the sideline warming up, apparently because of the injury to Peace or also the inability to Peace to get in on the scoreboard combination. He's liable to get in there, but in the meantime, flips out. Has excellent field position at the 41. First down. Straight ahead goes Leon Perry. Gets a few yards. Well, this ball game is not over, but even if Tampa Bay should come back to win it, we can't help but think that the Stadium can undefeat in New Orleans next week. And we can't help but think that Tampa Bay has got to go up and play Philadelphia, which at the moment just happens to be tied with New Jersey for the lead in the Atlantic Division, having won four out of five. Neither team will walk out of the stadium with a free lunch next week. Not at all. Second down, seven to go. From the 44, Cribs, for the first time in a long while, carrying the football and may have the first down. Inside the 50, James Harrell, number 50, ran him down. Cripps has not carried the ball too much lately. Well, Tampa Bay, they're not the only team that holds. holds. Watch Buddy Adelet, number 78. He does a little holding of his own. Here he comes. He's going to come out. Buddy Adelet 
is blocking on Simmons. <laughs> but you got to do everything you can to keep the man away from the ball carrier, and the Crimson did pick up the first down. You know what you've proven to me tonight? Sometimes it's more fun to watch replays of those folks in the trenches than anybody catching or running the football. Jim, that's where the whole game is played. You that I know. You get all the fun. fancy running backs and wide receivers and quarterbacks you want, but the job is done between the two lines. From the 49 first down, 49 of Tampa Bay. And there's Perry for some tough yards. I'm going to check on how many times Leon Perry's carried the ball because we were really told he's here as a blocker tonight. Jim, you know, when we talked about at the beginning of the show, we talked about Steve Spurrier, that it, was he panicking or what is he doing as far as starting Wayne Peace? He honestly believes that the young man is ready to play, and he showed some great signs at different times. He didn't have all the great protections. But the one thing about it, I, I may not have played him against this football team as his starting game. That's why I said this is a tough football team, Birmingham. They won their last three in a row. And looks like they're getting better all the time. Here's Stout stepping up into the pocket. Underhand flip. And Cripps is rolled down, but he may be close to yet another first down. Ball inside the 40-yard line. Okay, now we're looking at Stout on the other side. Does he have the protection? He's going back to pass. Take a look at the offensive line. There's Adelaide. And there's Robert Woods. Now the blocking breaks down a little bit. Watch as a stop comes out and just flips the ball to Joe Cribs in front. He said, I don't want to run with it. Here, Joe, they pay you more than they pay me. Why don't you go ahead and take it and see if you can get killed by number, by number 75 Carter and company. Ten minutes to go in this ball game, 20 to 9 Birmingham, and they're moving from the Tampa Bay 39. It was a first down. Could well be that he will be back. That is what he's done tonight. Had not thrown a pass before tonight. 50% of his passes. By the way, Leon Perry, the big blocker, before this game, carried the ball 11 times. He's not supposed to do that. <laughs> no. I had Dr. Raleigh when we see him in Birmingham next week. He lied to us. But I'll tell you, when, when they were keying Joe Cripps so much, he had to do something to take the heat off of Cripps. And it's a good call to give Leon the ball. How many players did he get? Uh, 31. He's only averaging, well, he's averaging less than three yards to carry, but does have a touchdown. Yeah. Tampa Bay's just got to stop Birmingham here, or that'll be all she wrote. And Chris is a tough man to stop. And the flag goes down as Pip gets the first down. Hell hanging on to Cripps, but a flag went down as Cripps took it to the left and turned toward the 30-yard line. You know, we were talking about Leon Perry and what a block he got. That's one of the reasons he's there. We've got holding on Birmingham. That'll bring that back. Raleigh Dodge, his team is winning, but they're not rolling over Tampa Bay. And there's still nine minutes left. Holding number 64, offense, second down. Mike Turner, who's been filling in for Pat Phoenix, who's been injured at the right tackle spot. Call for hold. Second down and 16 to go. I'm going to call a play. Ready? Okay. 35 okay. trap. They're going to run the ball. They're going to trap to the weak side guard between the guard and tackle. And Cribs is going to carry the ball. That's on this side. Here it comes. 35 trap. <laughs> Here he comes. Well done. But you didn't pick up the first down. Well, I had to play. <laughs> I had the right play call at that time, the 35 trap. You're going to have Pat Sainz coming in, and he's going to trap, and they're going to run to the outside. Here it comes. Now that's Battaglia, number 59. Watch, he's going to get Johnson, number 58. He just gets a piece of him to get Joe Cripps to the outside. Here comes Joe. He knows the play is there, but the hole is not open yet, so he breaks it back to the outside. Clark, 79, misses the tackle. Bedoin coming up. He gets a little help from uh, Alonzo Johnson, number 58. And my 35 trap picked up about 15 yards. I liked it. Third down and three to go. And there's Chris on the other way, diving for the first down, but does not get it at the 31-yard line. So now it is fourth down. And Raleigh Doss 
Rust along the sidelines. He's got Danny Miller over there. Could try an extra long field goal. Could go for it. Could try to pump the ball inside the 20. What would you do, coach? Go for it. You're running the clock down. They're 750 and counting. And you Tampa Bay would not have that great a field position if they don't make it. 30 yard right. line. If you miss the field goal, they're going to get the ball right there anyway, so why not go for it? Especially if you got the number one rushing offense in the league. Fourth down and nearly two to go. Great hand off to Perry. Now Chris. Here's Chris. Has got the first down. Down to the 28 yard line, and the clock will continue to roll. And some of the disappointed fans who sat out an early electrical storm now to see their team down by the score of 20 to 9. They have not seen them lose here this year, but they are losing tonight 20 to 9. I think our men and MVPs ought to be Italia and Nordgren. For the, <laughs> for the replay. They win the dance contest anyway. I know. It was a great On the 28 yard line. And an MVP, $1,000 for the college or university. The most valuable player to call him my pick in this game. Given by the Menace Company. Straight ahead. Before Zach Anderson comes up to make the stop. Is Leon or Joe Cripps, beg your pardon. And Cripps picks up about seven yards down to the 21-yard line. We talked about Buddy Adlett bowling a little while ago, but I think he's one of the finest guards in the league. Now watch Adlett. He's going through for the linebacker. Now he's got a hit on Paul Pirowski and just screen him out, take him to the outside, and it's a perfect block. And you'll see the hole. He's also getting blocks up front by Tom Banks, the center. But Adlett hits Pirowski. Uh, Alonzo Johnson, number 58, comes in and makes the play, but the hole is there at second down and three. Ripped has 77 yards for the ball. Here's Perry trying to pick up the first down. Remember, while all this is going on naturally, the clock continues to roll. Pirowski and Kurtzbaum made the stop of Perry. But Ripped is having a good night, 77 yards. But the clock is now down to 545. Another big third down play, and you know this is two down situation for Birmingham. If it was back at the 31, it is certainly inside the 20. And if Birmingham scores on this drive here, which will take it around five minutes or into four minutes, we'll put it 27 to 9. The only people to be left in here are the wives of the Tampa Bay players. Wayne Peace has sprained his right foot, could return. If Tampa Bay ever gets the ball right. There's Perry going for the first down, and they're just grinding it out now, Paul. There's Peace hobbling. I think this is going to be all rather a subjective deal here. See if and when Tampa Bay gets the ball back, because the Stallions are moving it. They are on short yardage. The last three times have easily picked up the first down. The clock is still running, 4.55 to go. And they're in no hurry to get this play off. Looking for their fourth consecutive win. And remember, they already had one nine-minute drive that resulted in a score. Looking for somewhere to run. Cribs gets down to the 10-yard line and maybe to the nine. Zach Henderson is the man up top. Jim, have you noticed all these running plays? They're all run between the tackles. Even the long run that Cribs made was supposed to be between the tackle and the guard. He broke it to the outside. So what they're doing is working on the middle of the Tampa Bay defensive line. Second down and four to go from inside the 10-yard line. And we're getting down to, by the time this next play is off, it'll be up just about the four-minute mark, a little bit below. Eating up the clock. Cribs straight up the middle. And Cribs is near a first down. He's and again, short. between the tackles. Yeah, it's, it's, they are just working on the middle. Uh, you put the bull in there, Leon Perry, and all of a sudden he just grinds away and they start taking the pounding. And then, you know, you bring Cribs in there, but the blocking by the linemen, Adelette and Banks, Sainton, Battaglia, Turner, and Woods, they are just doing such a great job in the middle of that line. They've used over eight minutes on this drop. It's another nine-minute drive for a touchdown. That's the kind of football that you want to see play. This reminds me of the old Miami Dolphins team. Boy, they're really just grinding it out between those tackles. Here's Cribs going back between them again. You can see the man up top is Ron Simmons, and down the bottom of Doyne, but... That's academic. It's first and goal to go as they'll spot the ball at about the five-yard line as we come down to the three-minute mark. 
Well, Tampa Bay is going to have to regroup and go up against Philadelphia, which is a, well, the outstanding defensive team in the league. Have pretty good runners. One of them's name is Calvin Bryant. And Birmingham goes back home. And at Legion Field, Paul and I will be there next Monday night when undefeated New Orleans comes to town. Raleigh's starting to congratulate the players because he knows he's got this game wrapped up. And starting to prepare for next week. You bet. First and goal to go. Stout moving it all by himself. And he doesn't have the ball. Is Daryl Mason. Nobody was there. Well, Daryl's got a reason to hang his head. He has no touchdown passes this year. That would have been the first. And for Stout, it would have been his third touchdown throw. You talk about setting up a play. You got a nine-minute drive running the football. They faked to Joe Cribs a little pop out here to Daryl Mason. That's Doug Bedoin, 28. Not even close oh. to him. And you know what they call that? That's what's called shorthanding the ball. It hit right off his fingertips. Two minutes and 32 seconds to go. And Todd Henry Birmingham leading 20 to 9. Jim Simpson, Paul McGuire. Birmingham looking to win its fourth in a row, and Tampa Bay its second loss in a row. It is second down and goal to go from the inside of the five. And we've got to pick a men and MVP here shortly. A lot of candidates on that field tonight. Stout running with the football and trips it low, and Chris comes without a bound. At about the three. Joe could not handle it. Still trick play. You ever seen this trick play? That's a gadget they put in just for this game. Stop going down the line of scrimmage. He's got the ball. Face to Perry. All right. Goes right by. That's Hannah, number 20, to miss him. Flips it to Joe. He gets it. Flips it out of bounds. They pick up two yards on the play. They may put that in. <laughs> Third down and two to go. 20 to 9, Birmingham, and the two yards from really putting this game out of sight. Stout has had a good night. Shows his strong arm. There's Cribbs looking for the end zone and got it. Joe Cribbs scores. There's a candidate with nearly 100 yards in rushing in his first touchdown of the night. Game's all over. Raleigh Dodge just took off his headset. Joe Cribbs just followed his blockers. Here goes Perry. Watch him. He's going to come down and get a block on Hannah. He's gone. Pulling out to the outside. Number 76, Bourne. He gets a block, and there's Joe Cribbs. Remember, the ball has to cross the goal line, and that it did. Now well, they come up, Danny Miller, to have the extra point. That's another long, long drive. It ate up almost all of the fourth quarter. Miller does have the extra point, and the score is 27-9, Birmingham over Tampa Bay. The Mississippi, the Memphis Saturday night. Jacksonville will be there, and so will ESPN, 8 o'clock this Saturday night, live from the Liberty Bowl. Join us then as we take a look now as Miller is about to kick off. Miller's kick. Fitzpatrick. Taking it to five, Fitzpatrick. Boy, he almost had the ball taken right out of his hands, but did not get the ball back to the 20. 2.09 to go. We'll take time out. Birmingham in charge. Why do we have a picture of Dave Pure for the picture? Well, offensive tackle of Tampa Bay John Kane, I can tell you why. Because he couldn't have it. And Pure Fires are men, Pure Fires are men and MVP. The thousand dollars to the college university of his choice. Here's some of the problems that Kane I was having through the course of the game. But watch what Dave Purifoy does here. He's pulled down. Now he gets back up in pursuit. And this is also the play where Wayne Peace got hurt. John Reeves remembers the quarterback. <laughs> And must throw, and Reeves does throw, and as for Billion, who almost lost the football, but he was close to a first down. Well, I don't know if they're going to have a hurry-up offense with Paul. He almost has to throw the ball every time, but another outstanding defensive job by Birmingham on the ground. 16 carries by Tampa Bay for 74 yards only. Remember, one time they had 80. Well, Peace lost the view along the way. Time of possession, 41 minutes as Harvey had the ball. Peace, and there is Harvey, the tight end. And he's going to be dragged down for the first down. Time out because Harvey picked up another first down. You know... Oh, look at this. Hey, Scribbs right in front. Oh, Joseph. Hey, hey, 
Boy, they have a tough week ahead of them getting ready for New Orleans. First down from the 43. Flags are down as we put the ball out there and nobody's going to get to it. Trevillian was the closest to them. You know, we have had in the last couple of minutes on this telecast three commercial positions of breaks or whatever you want to call them. You wonder why they're running all those commercials. Well, Birmingham carried the ball on that last touchdown drive, 18 plays for 11 minutes and 10 seconds. That's why we just stayed with the action for 11 minutes and 10 seconds of playing time. So they put us in that position. And remember, Jim, now there's 11 minutes there on that drive to score the touchdown. There's Cliff Stout. He had a great game. 11 minutes on that drive, right? Then you had an over a nine-minute drive, Jim, or close to a nine-minute drive for another touchdown. And that's what Birmingham does. They just grind you to pieces. 20 minutes for two scores. Anywhere, and that's going to make that rushing average look even better. He just got back to the line of scrimmage. Clock continuing to run. Hurry up offense. Tampa Bay's got all of his timeouts, but let's face it, it's 27 to 9 with a minute to go. Here's Reeves. Across the middle. And down goes Boone again. Shy of the first down. And it is going to be fourth down. That's short yardage. We haven't called Boone's name all night long. All of a sudden, Reeves gets in the game, and the man that Raleigh Dodd said he feared more than anybody else was Boone, and Reeves goes to his right. They need six for the first down. And there's a throw across the way, incomplete. And the ball, and Spencer Jackson couldn't get it. And that means that it goes over to... Birmingham and the Stadiums are now 4-1-0. and They've won their last four in a row since losing to New Jersey 17-6. Tampa Bay, which won its first three over Houston, Arizona and Jacksonville, has now lost two, 36-30 to to Denver, but they took a drubbing tonight, 27-9. to There's a happy man. What did we talk to him earlier this morning? Raleigh just said, well, after we are running the ball, we have the best defense against the Russians, and I just hope it all works. Well, it worked tonight. They led from the beginning on a sack in the end zone apiece for a safety. Tampa Bay heads in front at 3-2, and that's the last they came close to being anywhere near competitive. They held them, but they couldn't score. Now they just want to put the knee down and run this thing out. They don't have to run another play. Uh, players are coming on the field from both sides. No time has been called yet, and the clock continues to run. Now there'll be the usual shaking of hands as they will leave the field. And Birmingham goes home to play undefeated New Orleans, which we will have next Monday night. And Tampa Bay has got to lick its wounds, get ready, and after a two-game losing streak, they've got to go up against Philadelphia as the number one defense in the USFL. Ball game is over, and the Stadions have won it 27-9. Well, I'm, I'm just so thoroughly impressed with the running game of Birmingham. And Raleigh Dodd says, you know, they set a record with a few games ago, Jim. They threw 29 times. That's a record, so that tells you. And for the second week in a row, Cliff Stout had a good night. Jim Simpson, Paul McGuire, good night from Tampa Bay.